Hello guys, welcome back to this channel Learn for Check. And today we are on Cisco IOS DHCP Relay Agent or DHCP Relay Agent configuration with Cisco routers. So first, DHCP, DHCP is a dynamic host configuration protocol. We have discussed this uh, on the last video. Please go back and review on it. So DHCP is commonly used network protocol for automatic IP address assignment. It involves four specific types of packets. Since devices don't uh, initially have IP addresses, they use broadcast messages within the network, seeking a DHCP server to respond and provide the necessary IP configuration. So let me maximize this diagram. Broadcasting process, uh, broadcasting process a challenge because it requires the DHCP server to exist in the same broadcast domain as routers don't forward packet, uh, broadcast packets. Uh, this is illustrated uh, on, on this diagram. Now we have, uh, we have to the left, we have a uh, PC1. In the middle, we have a router. And on the right, we have DHCP server. The client is seeking an IP address using DHCP and initiates this process with DHCP discover message as we discussed on the last video. However, the router, this, this router, as part of its function, refrains from forwarding broadcast traffic, which means, which means the DHCP discover message will never reach DHCP server. So, how can we address this challenge? Because, as you know, for the broad DHCP broadcast message from PC1 must reach this DHCP server for it to respond. But part of the features of router, router is not capable of forwarding packets. So what can we do here to make sure that this is router I mean router does is not capable of broadcasting packets how what can we do to make sure this packet this broadcast packet can reach the server the HCP server and we know router cannot broadcast so we have to use address this issue we have to use the HCP relay agent feature in short, the router will forward DHCP request from the client PC1 to the DHCP server. When DHCP server responds, it will forward message back to the DHCP client with the help of DHCP relay agent. So, DHCP relay agent is a network device or feature that facilitates the communication between DHCP client and DHCP server in different subnet or broadcast domain. Like here we have different subnets, 192.168.10.0 and 192.168.10.20.0. So, for this communication to occur, we must have the HCP relay agent. 
its primary function is to forward DHCP messages from the client to the server and relay the message uh, and relay the DHCP server response back to the client. So the router will forward DHCP discover message as a unicast packet and also insert a field called GR or gateway IP address in the in the in the DHCP packet. So when packets when this broadcast packets reach here, what will be added is this IP 192.168.10.1 and this interface will be part of the DHCP uh, discover message when it's uh, forwarded to DHCP server. So this GR uh, field which contains IP address and uh, the interface is required by DHCP server or it won't know, the, the DHCP server won't know from which pool it has to select IP address, so the source IP address of this unicast packet will be 192.168.10.1. When it's moving this side, and the source will be for this IP. So, for example, here now, we have three subnets or three broadcast domain. We have subnet 10.10.10.0. 192.168.10.0 and this 192.168.10.20.0. So for this PC2 to receive an IP address, it must broadcast the DHCP discover message when it reaches here with the help of DHCP relay agent feature. Uh, the message will be, will add the source IP will be 10.10.10.1 and the interface G0 slash 1 slash 0. Then it will forward as a unicast packet to the DHCP server. With this information, the DHCP server will respond and will know where it will respond the request and the request will be on on this interface or this gateway. That's why PC2 will receive uh, an IP address. The same way, when from, from, from PC1 sending this uh, DHCP discover message, this IP 192.168.10.1 and with this interface G slash 0 slash 0 slash 0 will be part of the message with, as a source, uh, source IP, address, IP address when it is being forwarded here. The packet will have this message, and the SP server will know where it responds to. That's how C1 will receive an IP address. So we assume maybe we have a big network with different subnet or uh, broadcast domain. The, the router will use the source IP addresses or the gateways of each and every subnet to forward the packets as a unicast to the HCP server. That's how the HCP relay agent work. Hello, now this is our setup for the HCP relay agent configuration. We have our setup. Our topology, we have router 1 connected to the DHCP server. We have router 2 connected to the endpoints. We have switch and the PCs. And we have router 3. For router 2, we have network 1, network 2. And router 3, we have network 3 and network 4. Those are broadcast domains. Or we can also say subnets or networks. So I have already assigned 
IP addresses to the interfaces like uh, like here you can be sure IP int brief you can see now we have interfaces as per our topology we have interfaces for R2 R1 interfaces we have SE or serial 0 1 0 slash 1 0 and the IP is 1 and 2 dot 1 dot 50 dot 1 we have G0 slash 0 slash 0 and this is the IP dot 1 and we have a serial 0 slash 1 slash 1 this is the IP and the uh, network for this uh, G0 slash 0 slash 0 for R2 is 192.168.1.0 and the uh, gateway is 254 this, this, this is our configuration now what you can do we have to configure the routing for this uh, for this computer for this computer to communicate with another computer with different network we have to configure a routing we have uh, normally we have a static routing and dynamic routing for me i'm choosing a dynamic routing non has ospf open short path fast it's a link state routing protocol that was developed for IP networks and is based on short path, the shortest path uh, a, a logarithm. And uh, we'll do it on later videos. We'll do the dynamic uh, protocols. But for now, let me just configure it uh, and see how it works. For router one, I go to the global configuration. For OSPF, router OSPF, process ID is one. Okay, you should not worry with these uh, commands. I'll do a video on the OSPF or the dynamic routing on later videos. I'm just doing it for our route, for the routing or for the communication of our PCs only. So, if you may not understand what I'm doing, please don't worry. We'll do it on on later videos. So, OSPF one, we have interface. Exit interface G zero slash zero slash zero ip ospf one we have area of zero we have interface is zero slash one slash zero ip ospf one area zero we have interface SE zero slash one slash one IP OSPF one area zero. I've already configured OSPF for router one. Zero slash zero slash zero IP or SPF one area zero interface G zero slash one slash IP or SPF one area zero. 
interface SD zero slash slash zero IP or SPF one area zero. So we have for the uh, configured uh, SPF, this message shows that uh, a doesn't uh, process is one it's full load. So now there's a communication between this network and this network. So let me configure, let me configure R2, R3. zero slash zero slash zero POS FPF one area zero interface D zero slash zero slash one IP OSPF one area area zero interface serial zero slash one slash one ip or spf one area zero so there's our communication now it's loading from full it's loading full to done now it's done now with this uh with this dynamic routing configuration i can now ping from this from this from this router i can i can ping this ip i can ping 192.168.3.254 so with the help of dynamic routing i can ping ip which is within this interface but without dynamic routing or that routing configuration, I cannot access. I cannot access any network. I can only access uh, connected interfaces. But I cannot uh, access interfaces outside the uh, my connection. That's why I have to use the routing configuration to access uh, the, uh, these devices here now. I cannot access these PCs because they don't have any IP addresses. I can open and check. We don't have any IP address. Now, I, now I have to configure a DHCP server to make sure these PCs get IP addresses automatically. And be, be, before we configure the DHCP server, we have to assign a static IP to the server. So how to assign a static IP to the server, go to the desktop, and the static IP will be 10.10.10. This one here. And subnet mask is 255.255.0. And default gateway is 10.10.10.1. This is the default gateway. So we are good. From here, from this PC, I have to ping. I have to ping this PC server 10.10.10. .10 .10. I can ping IP 255 a server from router 1. And I can, I can also ping server from router 3. 10.10.10.10 Yes, success. I can ping the server from router 3 now. 
Now, since I can ping the server, let me enable and configure the HTTP service on the server. To enable the HTTP service, uh, services on the server, I just click the server itself and go to the service. Then I click DHCP. The service I click on. Now I select a pool. For pool one, I'll call I'll call it network one. Network get you, default gateway is this one. 192.168.1.254. This is the default gateway of this network. 192.168.1.254. DNS server. I choose a.a.a.8. .a .a and the start IP. My IP, my automatic. IP I want to start them from 192.168.10 I mean sorry from dot one dot ten and this is a submit mask the maximum now the maximum number of users I want uh, to be a hundred let's leave this one Add. Now I have the pool of network one. Let me go to network two. The pool network two and the default the default gateway is one and two dot one sixty eight dot two dot two five four. This one and two dot 168.2.254 DNS server I put 8.8.4.4 Touch IP 192.168.2.20 You can choose any depending on your network requirements the maximum number of users I want 50. I add. So let me go to the next pool, network three. The default gateway is 192.168.3.254. 192.168.3.254. DNS server 2.2.2.2. I'm just choosing this DNS servers randomly. They are not the real DNS server anyway, apart from 8.8.8. .8. So starting IP 192.168.3. I want to start it from 5. The number of users. I want 20. I add. We are remaining with one. And the one we are remaining is network, the pool network four. IP address, the default gateway 192.168.4.4. NS server is 1.1.1.1. .1 I want to refresh them. 1 and 2. I want to start 192.168.4.30. And uh, the number of users, I want 150. Then I click add. Now, I, I have the network pool for each and every network. I have network one, this is a pool network two, network three, and network four. 
So still, still, I cannot have. I cannot have the the CP IP here. I, I cannot have IP because we have not configured uh, the the HCP relay agent. So this switch, I mean this <coughs> computer, sends or broadcasts the HCP message here. But when it reaches here to the router 2, router 2 cannot broadcast this message because it doesn't have the capability to broadcast. So discard it here. Now what, you, what, what we have to do here, we have to configure the HCP relay picture for this router 2 and router 3. When it reaches here, it just forwarded as a unicast. That's why we don't have, there's no need to configure the HCP, uh, the HCP, the HCP relay agent here. Router 1, there's no need to configure, but we have to configure router 2 and router 3 because they are connected to the endpoints or they are connected to the DHCP client. Now let's go to router 2. As you can see, we don't have the 192.0, we only have APPA. IP, but not the real IP, 192.168.1. something we don't have because we don't have the HCP relay agent. Let us configure the HCP relay agent on router 2. Open router 2. Enable. Config terminal. So we have interface. This interface. Interface G0 slash 0 slash 0 to configure I to configure the CP helper. We use this IP, we, did, we use this command IP helper address. And what is the destination helper address? We have to use. We have to point to the server. So IP helper address. And we have to point the HCP server 10.10.10.10. And we go to exit. We go to interface G0 slash 0 slash 1. This interface. We configure the help IP address helper. <coughs> IP helper address 10.10.10.10. We have to point the HCP server. Now exit. We are done. We are good. We have just configured now the HCP relay agent feature on this router on interface. G0 slash 0 slash 0 and G0 slash 0 slash 1. Let's go to router 3. Interface G0 slash 0 slash 0. This interface, this interface, configure the CP help IP. Help address is 10.10.10.10. We have to point the HCP server. Exit. Interface G0 slash 0 slash 1. IP. Help address 10.10.10.10. Those are the only commands for the HCP relay. Just, no, now let's go back to PC1, PC0, and check. As you can see now, we have, it has changed from the app address to 192.168.1, network1.10. It has started dot 10 because 
of our requirements for the, as you can see, the starting address is 10. So from AP1 to 9, we can use them for the static, uh, as a static address for devices like servers, other routers, maybe if you have want to test, and also printers and other devices which you want to use static IP. So the dynamic will start 10. That's why we have this from 10. Now let's go to PC2 and check what will happen. Click the CP. As you can see now, 192.168.1.11, we are good. Let's go to another network, network 2, and check. 192.168.2.20 our 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 dynamic ip will start from 20 let's go to lab 2 and check so we are good to go on this network 2 let's go to network 3 Okay, 192.168.3.5, we are good. And DNS server is 2.2.2. .2. Let's go to PC3 of network 3. We have 192.168.6. We are good. Let's go to network 4, our final network. Now we have 192.168.4.30 and DNS server is 1.1.1. Let's go to our laptop. We have got, we have 192.168.4.1. So this is how we can configure DHCP relay agent. Okay, let me do a simulation of how the packets move let me try to ping from pc0 on network one let me try to ping the server 10.10.10.10 .10 and see how the packets move as you can see here the packet from pc0 is moving to the router router 2 and router 2 goes to router 1. From router 1, it directly goes to the server. So from the server, there's a response to router 1, as you can see here. From router 1, it goes to router 2. And from router 2, it goes to the switch 1. And to the switch 1, it goes to what? It goes to the PC zero, and the protocol here used is uh, ICMP. ICMP is the Internet Control Message Protocol. It's a protocol that that devices within the network use to communicate problem with the data transmission if there's any problem. And also, you can see STP here. It's a, STP is a layer two uh, network protocol used to prevent looping within the network if there is if there's any looping here stp will assist us to prevent it and here we have ospf ospf is a, a we have discussed it earlier that it's a dynamic routing protocol which has been used that's why you, you see ospf here and now this is how the gets move from one device to another Thank you guys welcome back let me see you soon on another on another video thank you now i i have